Oh, hey guys, I'm Stagel Beast, back for an episode one and only Sherlock like Holmes, chapter one, so let's do this. The bruises on your neck are not self-inflicted. Someone else made them. Some guests can't contain themselves. They even bite, sometimes. I have nothing to add. I have nothing to add. I have nothing to say. I don't know what to say. I have nothing to say. I don't know what to say. I have nothing to add. I'm just doing all of it. This book, The Power of Love, Blood and Mandrake, what do you hope to achieve? To learn more about the invisible strengths that govern us. Occultism is real. The master who fell that night when Fabio and I escaped, I made him fall. I cast a spell on him and it worked. Or was it a coincidence? The universe is really so lazy. If you say so. I don't know what to say. This is the letter the police found in Mr. Vogel's pocket. Fabio wrote it. Do you know anything about it? I don't. Although I can feel Fabio's energy. It's there, but it refuses to let me analyze it. Do you practice occult rituals? For protection? For fortune? To wash away the ugliness of the world? Sometimes to survive. I have the gift, and I'm learning to use it better. Did you use your gift on Fabio? I only used white magic. Love charms lately. Fabio became so distant. I just wanted him to be with me. But I suppose I'm not as skilled as I thought. The power of love. I have been a virtual. Interesting. Mind powers.
I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. This area is restricted. I know I can handle the news. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. I know nothing about this. I know nothing about this. Don't expect me to know anything about it. I can't help you. I know nothing about this. Mr. Manchios says that you begged him to be included in the heritage. Isn't that a little extreme, even for a major domo? He's not only my employer, he's my uncle. And I'm his next of kin. The only one. Mr. Manchios flatly refuses to pay a family member. All I have to do is repay his so-called love. Cleaning up the filth after perverts and decadence. He's imprisoned me. The best I can hope for is a new broom. That's why I wanted to have my part of the inheritance. Is it that bad? You have a roof above your head, a salary, and the status of a major domo. For God's sake. I'm forced to die and stitch my threadbare clothes, and the holes in my shoes are painful. I'm ashamed every time a guest looks at me closely. Why do you think your uncle treats you this way? My mother, my uncle's sister, had me illegitimately. He died, and I was given the surname of one of the maids. But you are entitled to some of the money that belongs to your family. He thinks not. I was not responsible for my mother's death. I work hard, and he pays me nothing. I feed on the leftovers. While he wastes our estate's property on decadent parties, he paid Fabio handsomely and showered him with expensive gifts for their disgusting relationship. That's a motive. Please let me out. There is undeniable evidence that you were the original recipient of this letter. What are you talking about? Is it addressed to me? Your protege wanted a fresh start, it seems. This is sufficient to charge you. Me? Hurt my star? Are you insane that you would accuse me of such a thing? He did not consider himself as yours. Since you deny everything, let's move on. Do you have any idea as to how the letter could have ended up in Mr. Vogel's pocket? You were the detective. Perhaps he took it from Fabio. Werner was a little high. <laughs> this is... This area is restricted. I need to go to Werner. I have reason to believe that the intended recipient of the incriminating letter may have been Kurt Manchios. Well, that makes sense. Too bad I can't remember how I came to possess it. Though I did spend quite some time with Mr. Manchios during the party. Unfortunately, even with an answer, that may still not be enough to clear you with the police. But fear not. I will persevere. I hope your attempt to put things straight will make up for... You being on a bender? Touché. I can't follow you here. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I can't follow you here. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I can't follow you here. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I can't follow you here. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I can't follow you here. 
I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I don't think I can tell you anything about this. I'm not supposed to know anything about this. I have learned who told the police about the crime. It was Santos Pinchetti. Do I know him? The major domo of the manor. He cleans up after you? Well, then he does his job perfectly. All but invisible. I couldn't tell you the first thing about him. The air here is rather refreshing. I'd even... My friends visit the place. I don't know what to say. Could Fabio have written this letter to Kurt Manchios? Oh. That could be. I never thought Mr. Manchios could make Fabio that angry, though. What do you mean? Well, Fabio wanted to disassociate from Mr. Manchios. Clients who are in love are both a blessing and a curse. But Fabio was here tonight. Money. In our line of work, we can't afford to turn down clients who pay as well as Kurt Manchios. Was Fabio afraid of Mr. Manchios? Not at all. The old toad wouldn't dare to do more than sweet talk and touching. Talk can be forgotten, and touching washed away. Fabio broke Kurt Manchios' heart. I can't wrap my head around such a tragedy at my party. Please let me out. I know you can untangle this mess. Found for current case, got it.
Okay, let's see. Okay, I see. Gentles, I tried to remove his like stupid blood. He lost his self after the murder. Ratio, planting the leather, better. Yeah, he is kind of a sexual predator, though. He gave me those type of vibes.
The murder of Fabio did not have a ritual purpose, Mr. Mancios. It was staged by a man who wished to distract the investigation. That might be true. That poor girl, Matista, wouldn't dare to kill the only man who cared for her. So, Santos? Mr. Pinchetti snatched at the chance to solve his problems. Ungrateful little scum. Will he be executed? Nope. But what for? He informed the police as to the crime, that was all. He couldn't stage the ritual, but he found the body, I believe. I can't believe it. Why did Werner do it? Mr. Vogel, he had no reason, and he won't be a scapegoat as you plan. You put Fabio's letter in his pocket when he was intoxicated, didn't you? You can't be serious. We can very often deduce someone's life by their shoes or their fingernails. You are a meticulous person, but this murder was fairly traumatic and filthy. After you stabbed Fabio, you were covered in blood. You panicked and neglected to rinse the soap from under your fingernails. The devil is in the details, Mr. Manchios. Nonsense. I missed it simply because of the busy schedule of the party. Of course, a staged murder was certainly not planned. You're at the twilight of your life. You have no partner, you have no children, you had feelings, however, for one man. That was Fabio. You loved him. That is, you wished to own him with money and gifts. But he was also a free mind, was he not? He turned his back on you. Quite unjust. Love, so cruel and painful. And Fabio, with his words and deeds, made you feel the more wretched. So you killed him. You must surely perceive that my sensitive nature wouldn't allow me to hurt anyone. You staged the murder as a satanic ritual. It was easy for you, since you were the one who wrote the scenarios for the parties. It was your way of avoiding suspicion. A respectable man in his 60s, early 60s, who hosts the cream of Cordona society, cannot possibly be a murderer. But the guests who behave like animals in his mansion, of course, one of them could have killed Fabio. I did oversee a few of the rituals, but I did not stage Fabio's death. Fabio played with your feelings. That was painful to realize. You spent so much time and effort to be with Fabio, but he didn't respond in the way that you would have liked. You wanted to be loved, but Fabio shattered your dreams. In the smoking lounge, he teased and mocked you. He wanted you to suffer by offering himself to others. The deception was unbearable. You were passionate, and so you struck him. Once you understood your mistake, it was too late. You were afraid, so you staged the ritual. With such a story, you might be sentenced to a few years. It might clean your conscience, and soon the case will be forgotten. No. No. This is my decision. I'll talk to Constable Oswald to see what I can do. I wish everything were different. I hate it when it does this.
the murder of Fabio did not have a ritual purpose, Mr. You staged the murder as a satanic ritual. It was easy for you. You're at the twilight of your life. You we can very often deduce someone's life by their sh The young performer played with your emotions. That was painful to realize. Yep. You spent so much time and effort to be with Fabio, but he didn't respond in the way you would have liked. You wanted to be loved. Fabio shattered your dreams. In the smoking lounge, he teased and mocked you. He wanted you to suffer by offering himself to others. The deception was unbearable. You struck him, and then you staged the ritual. You planted the letter in Vogel's pocket and attempted to set up Matista. What poppycock? Sherlock, stop this game now. There is no stop word, Mr. Manchios. Relax and enjoy it. I'll pass the remainder of this case to Constable Oswald. He'll know what to do with you. I have a name for you. Kurt Manchios. Is that so? The master of the Sabbath? Yep. The man himself. Mr. Manchios couldn't stand to lose control over his lover. A deadly revenge that deserves a proper sentence. I have all the evidence to charge him. A degenerate and a murderer. I'll make a name thanks to that for sure. As for my part, not everything was in place. Perhaps some documents were transferred somewhere else, but I couldn't find a trace of them. Then I remembered the discarded document drawers where we put the lost papers or the badly labeled ones, including the crime scene report of Violet Holmes's case. Everything I've found is on the desk here. Take it. Your persistence has saved me. Yeah, well, we had a deal after all. Your friend is free then. You can leave. Good luck, Constable. Don't forget the file. Wow, flashback. The garden. There's a garden behind our manor. How could I forget? That's where it all happened. Oh, Sherry? you did it, Sherlock. The case is closed and all rewards belong to the winner. Bravo. It is merely the triumph of the truth. Is it? No compromises? No lies? You're happy with your decisions? It was the best decision I could obtain. The truth must be told yep. in the way it is most acceptable. You're making progress, Sherlock. I was right to believe in you. By the way, did you get that precious information about your mother? Oh, not that you must. Yes, I did. Forgive my intrusion in such a personal matter. I simply worry I am failing to be of much help to you. Actually, you were. For some reason, all the archives on the case had disappeared. This was a rare opportunity to obtain the impossible. Outrageous. Perhaps someone found the truth unpleasant. Society usually rejects those who speak with too much honesty, doesn't it? A comfortable lie is often preferred to an uncomfortable truth. Still, I believe that the latter should prevail, and I cannot remain silent. That's quixotism at its best. Your mere truth cannot defeat institutions, systems, and power. Mm. Etiquette, religion, marriage, they're all lies told to preserve connections, love, and sanity, and it's all corruptible. Lies destroy human dignity. How could you make a free decision without any knowledge of the truth? Are we really free to decide anything in this world, Sherlock? I take your point. There are some limits on us all, some compromises we must make. Despite my best efforts, we cannot remain entirely objective. I didn't want to sadden you, Sherlock, only to make you think beyond your boundaries. You're a walking contradiction, Sherlock. You refuse to lie to others, but constantly lie to yourself. How long until the train comes off the track? 
I cannot look away, but perhaps I should take a few steps back. You're an accident waiting to happen, dear. Until <laughs> then, I shall bid you adieu. Where's my house at? Is it in Day? Yeah, it is. Garden, right? Hey, is anybody at home? Hello? I think our family portrait used to hang here. Do windows, got it. The floor level, right? Sherry, Sherry, please listen to me. Sherry. John, I always listen to you. You don't have to do this. You don't have to go through. I don't know what is beyond this door, but I can feel it buzzing, angry, like a fly at the window. I know. I can sense it too. You locked away this memory for a reason. There is only pain here. Pain? And truth? You do not need to suffer either. There is so much more we can do on Cordona. So many others we can help. There is no coming back from this. I find myself awash in uncertainty. Perhaps now is not the time with so much left to do. Thank you, Sherlock. Thank you. Some doors can remain closed. Cordona still calls for us, yes. And uh, we will answer. But know this, John. One way or another, we will find ourselves back in front of this door, unable to avoid the truth any longer. Indeed. I wanna, I wanna get some new, okay? I do some of the side quests. Church, right? Extra, extra. Interested in some Cordona news? Check the front page. You won't regret it.
That was the first person I got the death sentence for in the whole entire game. I'm gonna find the church. I wonder if. I like the open road in this game. I get up. I want to get to that church. Scocado at Elder Street. about my violin by any chance. I am. I saw from your posters that it was stolen. The name is Sherlock Holmes. Very pleased to meet you, Mr. Holmes. I'm Anthony, Anthony Jones. But uh, by the sounds of it, you haven't seen my instrument, alas. <laughs> but if there's anything you can do to help locate it, I'd be most glad. Yeah, oh, definitely. Just tell me exactly what happened. How was your violin stolen? Some needy soul broke into my home while I was out. The only thing of value they took was the instrument. Did you report the theft to the police? I did, but they dismissed it as petty theft. Don't get me wrong, eh? I don't blame them. They certainly have more important matters to deal with. It would be another crime if I let some petty thief get away with your beloved violin. Let me help you find it. Oh, thank you very much. I cannot tell you how grateful I am. <laughs> Come inside, I'll show you everything. I like this. Feel free to look around. We could bake apples here, or smoke a duck, <laughs> Ooh, or make pizza. Oh, Do you like I like them. door was kicked in. So this is a... Oh, is that blood? 
clumsy of a thief to cut himself on the glass he just broke. Yeah, what an idiot. The scrap of fabric is covered in white stains. The thief left the bow. I suppose he prefers pizzicato. The jaggy bottle reeks of cheap whiskey. An utterly useless theft deterrent for a glass display case. Nothing was taken except for the violin. How odd. I can't hear anything. Has it got strings? These are intricate pieces of music. Quite beautiful if my sight reading holds true. I see you've received many accolades. Impressive. Ah, those are from a long time ago. I used to perform a lot in my youth. Must be a good resistant one. This cover is dusty. It hasn't been taken off for a long time. Anything else you'd like to know? Does anyone else live here? No. My dear Emily died long ago. And God never blessed us with children. I used to give music lessons. But nobody visits me anymore. You weren't here when the burglary happened, correct? I was tending to my wife's grave at the cemetery. I was only gone a few hours and locked the door before leaving. Ah, oh, it is all so unfortunate. Blood. Analysis. I don't have the patience to do that. Ah, oh, it is all so unfortunate. I like this, the mystery as Swick of Beast Games. The trail stops here among the waste. Hello, sir. Would you like some fruit? Fresh from the orchard? I'm not hungry, but I'm looking for a violin that was stolen. Any chance you saw someone with one? Yes, I did. It was sailors, sir. And they were very good customers. They ate lots of fruit and said that my donkey looks like their friend. A lieutenant, lieutenant, lieutenant Sean. Hmm, a lieutenant. Did you see where they went? No, sorry, sir. I was helping other buyers. Oh, and sir, the sailors also took my donkey. So I guess they weren't very good customers. They promised to return him, but they didn't come back. My father will kill me if he finds out. So I'm still waiting here for them. Do you know Anthony Jones, the musician? He lives nearby. Of course. Mr. Jones is very kind. He never barters. Funny you ask. I'm yet to crack a smile, so pray tell. Well, the first time they came by, the sailors mentioned something about music, so... I told them Mr. Jones can teach them how to play. Wait. So what is his violin? Oh. You couldn't have known they would steal from the old man. Fortunately, you made up for it with your testimony. I'll find them and your donkey soon enough. Stay put. Someone must have seen where they took it. It's a donkey, for heaven's sake.
be just change to worker strap con. Can you satisfy my curiosity? Listen, friend. I like your face. I'll tell you. Donkey was being stubborn, but so were they. There we are. The first lead in our asinine chase. One of them lost his cap. They certainly bought a lot of fruit from the boy. Fear of scurvy, perhaps? Pile of dung. An act of defiance. I hope it got on their shoe. Two. Another bottle of whiskey. Oh, this must be Lieutenant Sean. The sailors couldn't get him inside the tavern. Don't forget to point the boy to his donkey on our way back. Reef, those drunks are re... Lots of sailors. Those drunks are. Let's see, place. Arbor now. Let's see, sailors. Okay, let's take care of some sailor ass. Hey, they're not sailors. Gonna kick his out. Like hell. Ah. Too simple. They look like thugs pretending to be sealers. No more crime for you until next month. Hey, the next. snuff's ready. I'm coming for you. Take a rest, my friend. Simple. Ah. Just die. I couldn't miss the party. No more crime for you until next month. Give him the pepper snuff. I'm coming for you. I got you now. Take a rest. No more crime for you until next month. Well, they left me no choice. I think I might be nearing intoxication myself just from the smell of them. Found it. And somehow, after all the mayhem, it's still in one piece.
I found your donkey. It's not far from here, outside the Wet Whiskers Tavern. You'd better go after it before someone decides to borrow it again. Thank you, sir. I'll be quick as a flash. Hey, Yusuf, please look after my cart, okay? And don't eat anything. Well, you can have a couple of grapes, but only the small ones. Well done. I look forward to the beautiful reunion. I need to go back to the music teacher and give him back his... Where is he? Here's your violin, Mr. Jones. It might have gained a few nicks and scratches, but considering what it's been through, it's a miracle that it's still in one piece. God bless you. I am deeply in your debt, Mr. Holmes. The scratches don't matter. They are like scars, each telling a story. It is the sound that matters. Oh, you should hear her sing. It would be my pleasure. This melody, Sherlock. Don't you recognize it? Early memory. Look up, Sherry. There used to be an attic up there. We used to sneak in from the roof and listen to Mr. Jones play when we were children. You should tell the old man the truth. I think it will mean a lot to him. Bravo. I'd forgotten how beautiful a violin sounds in the skilled hands of a virtuoso. That uh, melody it brought back some memories. I have a confession to make, Mr. Jones. As a child, I used to sneak into the attic above this very room and listen to you play, spellbound by the music. Oh, so that was you. After my wife's death, it was difficult to pick up the violin again. But knowing someone was listening helped me persevere. In fact, a young man like yourself could breed a second life into this instrument. It's a remarkable outlet for one's emotion. You should have it. I, I can't accept that. And, well, I don't play. <laughs> ah, it's never too late to learn, Mr. Holmes. The way I see it, the violin chose you. Take good care of her. Sherry, I'm really glad we have his first bell. Oh, I like that. So, because of the video, see you guys next time. Bye.